we are going to get you through the last 15 levels of New World so you can start partaking in the max level goodness. I have a tip that's going to get you a lot of XP really quickly, but I'm going to save it for the end of the video because it's a one-time thing, and I actually recommend that you save it for the last level or two. It got me from level 59 to 60 in about 30 minutes, which is pretty crazy. Also, the first half of the video is going to be more walkthrough style, and the second half is going to be some tips that you can use to get over any humps that you get into when you feel stuck while you're leveling so if at any point you feel like the video passes you up just stay because that stuff's going to apply to you at any level throughout the video okay let's start at level 45 if you're slightly under 45 i recommend just doing some quests in either weavers or restless or if you really feel stuck you can go and check out my 25 to 45 leveling guide on that video i give some tips for if you're stuck in any of those levels so if you need that be sure to go check out that video and then come back and visit this video after but anyways at level 45 you are pretty set up to be able to enter the depths expedition the main storyline quest is going to take you into the depths expedition it's also going to give you an orb so you can enter the expedition so be sure to stay caught up on the main storyline because it's really the best way to level up this quest in particular is going to give you 12,500 experience you're also going to want to complete some quests that Tazlov gherkin gives you he's located right here in restless shores he's also going to give you a quest that's going to send you into the depths expedition and it's also going to give you an orb so you will have two and then this quest that he gives you offers you another 12 12,500 experience. So if you have both these quests, you can actually get 25,000 experience in one run of depths. You can also get some faction quests from Restless Shores that are going to take you into the expedition, but those don't offer you as much XP, but they are still good if you can get them. Before you go into the expedition, you want to talk to the little alligator outside. He's going to give you a repeatable quest. You're going to have to be level 43 to get the quest from him, but it's going to offer you 8,600 experience, so another pretty significant chunk. Like I said, his quest is repeatable, so you can do it every time you go into the expedition for a good chunk of XP. Once you're in the expedition, you're going to want to keep an eye out for the hunk of meat drops. There are going to be three of them. One is from Boar who is this big demon looking mini boss. The second is from Archdeacon Azamela, who is the first boss. And then the last one is from Captain Thorpe, who is the final boss in the Depths Expedition. You need these drops to complete the quest for the little alligator that we mentioned earlier. While you're fighting the bosses, be really careful not to die during the fight, because if you do and your team still manages to kill them, then your quest actually isn't going to be completed and you're going to have to rerun the expedition. This actually happened to me while I was leveling and it was really annoying, but luckily I had the second order from the side quest so I can just go back in and complete it. One big tip when you finish the expedition is to stay grouped up with at least one of your group members and start going through a little bit more of the main storyline quest. These are going to take you back to Brightwood where you're going to hit a quest called A Hero's Duty. For this quest, it's going to take you into an area that only people with the quest can go into and it's actually really a pain and pretty annoying to do solo. So this is why I recommend that you stay grouped up with someone from your expedition because you can get to this quest pretty quickly and if you stay grouped up with them, they can go into the area with you as long as they have the quest and you can complete it together. This is why I recommend, since you're already in a group, just to ask somebody if they want to go through a few more quests with you. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Once you're done with this quest, I recommend that you just stay going down the main story quest line until you hit a quest that's too high of a level for you. Personally, I found a good stopping point at the quest Race for a Box, which is going to take you into Eden Grove, but you may hit another quest that feels a little bit too high of a level for you. Just feel it out yourself. Once you hit that stopping point on the main storyline quest, you can go back into Restless Shores and complete as many as the side quests as you can do if you don't know these are the yellow ones you're always going to want to do town board and faction quest alongside of these quests to level up as fast as you can once you start running out of side quests in restless you can actually head up to morningdale which is just north of restless at this point you're going to probably be around the high 40s and this is when things get a little bit weird you want to complete as many quests as you can in morningdale but you're going to notice that you're going to start running out of quests really quickly and only be left with faction quests once it starts happening you're going to want to head over to great cleave and start doing some side quests over there great Great Cleave actually doesn't have a town board, so those quests are going to be off the table, but you can still do faction quests there. If you notice, there's actually two outposts in Great Cleave. You can start doing the quests in the east outpost, and eventually it's going to take you to the western outpost. You're going to continue getting quests for both outposts, so just complete them the best that you can. The area is pretty annoying to navigate, so usually what I recommend is to complete multiple quests on one outpost and then head back to the other one whenever it's convenient. Running back and forth from outpost to outpost can be pretty annoying, so what I recommend is just to complete quests for one side of the outpost at once because usually the eastern outpost is going to give you quest on the east side of Great Cleave and the western outpost is going to give you quest on the west side. 
What this means is there's usually not that much overlap in the quest, so you're gonna have to travel to different areas anyways. You can quest here until around level 51, and you can keep an eye on Morningdale to see if they offer any more side quests to you. At 51, you can check your main storyline quest and see if you stopped at the Race for the Box mission. If you did, you can head over to Eden Grove and do a little bit of leveling there, but if you're not stopped on the Race for the Box mission, that's gonna actually take you into Eden Grove, so I recommend catching up on the main storyline and then going to Eden Grove when you get there. I followed the main storyline all the way up to the Ixia order quest. This is going to take you into areas with enemies that are around level 59 and 60. This quest just has you harvest some stuff so you can try to sneak past the enemies but I just felt like this was more struggle than it was worth. You should get a decent amount of XP for completing these main storyline quests so just keep feeling them out and seeing if they feel a little too difficult for the time that you're putting into them. There's actually only a few more main storyline quests after the Ixia's order quest until you get sent into the dynasty expedition. The quest that's going to send you into there is called Saboteur. At this point, leveling is going to be pretty open-ended, but I'm going to give you a few options and some tips to go with them. If you decide to run Dynasty, you should be around a minimum of level 55. Be sure to grab the repeatable quest from the dude on the dock and do the quest through Zangling Young and Ebon Scale. He's going to give you another side quest that takes you into Dynasty, so you want this before you go in so that way you can take care of both the main storyline and the side quest all in one go. To get from level 51 to 55, what I did was a mixture of a few things. I did side and faction quests mostly in Ebon Scale and Great Cleave, but if you have others in Eden Grove or Morningdale, you can do those as well. I actually don't recommend going down to Reekwater until later on because the first quests that they give you are actually level 59. The enemies are pretty high level there, but the first like three or four quests are just to go in and grab some stuff, so you can usually just run past them if you're into that sort of thing, but I don't really find that a lot of fun. Also, I actually didn't even do the Dynasty Expedition until level 58, which I don't necessarily recommend because there are more story quests after the Dynasty quest, and you can run those for extra experience after you get through the Dynasty Expedition. Being a higher level definitely made the Expedition easier, but I didn't get to capitalize on these extra quests that I had after it. That's because Dynasty basically got me from level 58 to 59 itself, and then I got from 59 to 60 using the really quick technique that I'm going to save for last. One of the things that I actually did to get through the mid-50s that actually is a bit weird was I I went back down to Everfall and quested there. This wasn't my main starting zone, so I had a lot of quests down there. These didn't give me a lot of XP themselves, but what was actually really nice is there's a lot of notes laying around that were giving me about 300 experience for each one that I picked up. I found at least 30 of these notes, which netted me over 9,000 experience. Plus, the quests were just really quick to run through. It also increased my standing in Everfall, which is really nice because Everfall is a really popular settlement, and I was able to grab things like storage and tax reductions, which benefited me post level 60. Windsward is another good area that you can run through and do this in. Make sure that you keep an eye out for the question marks because that means that you haven't been to that location yet, which means that there are pages there that you haven't found. Usually you can find five or six pages there, which are going to give you some quick XP. If you don't feel like doing this, you can also run through some portals. Usually you're going to want a group to do this, but basically just look on your map and find portals that are recommended for around your level, travel there, and then destroy them. Doing this is a good way to farm both normal XP and weapon XP, and also when you destroy it, you're going to get a box that you can open that's going to offer you some good items and weapons. Another good way to get a lot of XP quick is town boards. These tend to suck up a lot of gold, but it can be really worth it considering the amount of XP that they're going to give you. Make sure that you're doing town boards in a location that have a lot of options available to you, so that way you can complete the easiest quest and abandon the quest that you don't want. Usually the quests that are the fastest and offer you the most XP are the ones that are just asking you for specific items. All you have to do to complete these is just buy that item from the trade center and then turn in the quest. Usually the more valuable the item that it's asking for, the more XP that it's going to give you. I actually did most of my town board quests around this level in Brightwood because it offered me a lot of quests and it had a good trading post. Usually Everfall and Windsward are good locations as well because they have stocked up trading posts. The trade posts are going to be connected soon, so if you're watching this video more than a couple weeks after it's posted, then this probably doesn't really matter. Just go to whatever area offers you the most quests and complete the town boards there. If you want to save some money, make sure that you're leveling up your leatherworking and your weaving because that way you can just buy lower tier materials and convert them into the materials that you need. This isn't always cheaper, but a lot of times it is. Also, leveling up your trade skills are going to give you some XP. This leads us into what I did to jump to level 59 to 60 in around 30 minutes. All I did for this was level my cooking. I was already cooking level 125 and just the 75 levels that it took me to go from 125 to 200 gave me a crazy amount of experience. All you have to do is buy the resources you need from the trade center and then craft some food. Light meals tend to work pretty well for this because you need two food resources of any tier and then one of tier three. I also made some satisfying meals to get me up to 150 and then from 150 to 200 
100, I crafted hearty meals. The reason I did this is because one, after level 60, they're still effective. And two, I was able to find a tier five crafting item in bulk for really cheap. I'll tell you exactly what the item was, but first off, I'm gonna tell you how to find the cheap items yourself. What you have to do is go into the trade center, sort by resources, cooking ingredients, and then sort by price to find the cheapest tier one items. When looking for the higher tiers, I actually found it easier to just click on the item on the left and then click through each individual item of the tier that I need and compare the prices. The cheap tier one items that I was able to find was fish filet, honey, berries, and pork. And the tier five item that I found that's actually selling for really cheap is pork bellies. These sold a lot cheaper than even the tier three and four items that I would need to craft the other types of meals. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more New Worlds content. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. Anyways, thanks for watching.